Okay, so now we're gonna start talking about uh, back pain. So this presentation here is on back pain. And uh, okay, so let's go. Okay, so why is back pain so important? Well, back pain is important because it is a common reason for visiting doc the doctor. It's also a popular reason for missing work and also a leading cause of disability. So for these reasons, we're gonna discuss back pain and this is what uh, makes it important. So, uh, what can you do um, where back pain is concerned? Of course, um, there are prevention methods, there are home treatments, um, proper posture, and as well as engaging in proper movement patterns, okay? So when it comes to prevention, uh, one a very important thing that can be done is the addition of a, a back belt or a back brace. It all depends on the type of work you're doing. If you're into a lot of lifting, uh, construction work, uh, even at the office where you have to uh, lift boxes, uh, a back belt can, can come in very handy and it can be a very important preventative method where back pain is concerned. Also for prevention, there are, there's an the exercise regimen that you can engage in, whether it's a home exercise regimen or if you um, attend a gym, um, doing back exercises to strengthen the back as well as increase the work capacity of the back as well as increasing the flexibility of the spine and can be very important when it comes to preventing uh, back pain. Uh, home treatment, um, there are certain methods you can use, um, for example, um, tennis balls or home massages um, that can be done after a, a long day at work or even during work. Uh, if your workplace allows, uh, you can do some massage, self-massage throughout the day uh, as part of your preventative um, back, uh, back pain regimen. Um, proper posture, if you have been assessed to have um, poor posture or if you suspect that you may have uh, bad posture, um, correcting your posture would be very important when it comes to um, preventing as well as um, uh, correcting back pain or curing back pain. Um, so, as well as um, the a proper office chair. If you know you sit at a desk for a long period of time, having a proper chair with proper lumbar support and even armrests can be very helpful. By having proper lumbar support, uh, you would prevent, you would take some of the strain of the lower back, you would also prevent the lower back from slouching backwards, thereby leading to back pain. Having armrests, uh, if you have armrests on your chair, um, what this does, this does take away some of the load of the back muscles. So chairs with armrests tend to be better for back pain than chairs without armrests, generally speaking. Uh, proper movement. Uh, if you are in a type of job where there's a lot of lifting, having a proper lifting technique uh, would be appropriate as well as even wearing a back belt during work would be helpful in preventing back pain as well as in treating back pain. Um, also, a uh, word of advice is if you have help at work, then you would definitely want to ask for help uh, in lifting heavy objects. If there are tools, for example, a, a forklift or uh, some sort of um, jack to help to move um, heavy objects, having using those um, implements um, that are available at work would be very useful in preventing and treating back pain. Uh, well, so proper movement as well. If you are engaging sports or gym activities, um, being assessed by a physiotherapist to assess for tight muscles, improper movements, um, joints that lack flexibility can also help you in preventing and treating back pain. Also your, your shoes, if your feet are either pronated or supinated, uh, with pronation, what I mean is that your feet tend to like turn inward like this, that's pronation, over pronation, and if your feet turn outward, that's supination. So having a poor foot alignment can also lead to uh, back pain. Also, if you have tight muscles, for example, if the, the glutes or uh, muscle are tight, then that leaves the back muscle with too much extra work to do. And this can also lead to back pain. So again, being assessed by a therapist for um, muscle flexibility and proper joint movements would also help you in preventing and treating back pain. Now, in terms of symptoms, you know, uh, people describe back pain in many um, different ways. Um, some people describe it as a muscle pain or a deep pain uh, as opposed to a superficial pain where you know where the skin might feel a burning sensation that would be a more of a superficial pain uh, when it comes to back pain that generally is not the um, way people would describe it they would say i have a, a deep pain or i feel like it's a muscle pain also person may describe a stabbing or shooting sensation 
for example, when I say, when I say a shooting sensation, a person may feel pain in the back and then they may feel that pain shoot into the buttocks region, the hamstrings or even the calves. And in the case of shooting pain, that also can be referred to as a radiating pain. Uh, irradiating pain that is the pain doesn't stay in one place in the back so you have a back pain and then the pain itself it, it basically shoots from the back down into the buttocks down to the back of the leg and then the classic sciatica sciatica is, is a case where a person would describe a radiating type of pain so again coming on coming on to sciatica uh, with sciatica the sciatic nerve is involved and what i mean by involved the nerve is either impinged or pinched or there's some inflammation along the part of the nerve and this is what causes the person to describe down the back of the leg they got tingling they got numbness they got this sort of a pins and needles sensation okay so when the sciatic nerve is involved um, that is th those are the sort of symptoms a person uh, may uh, describe also what sort of symptoms they may also describe is that pain that is worse with certain positions or movements so a person may say with their back pain if they bend forward then that is where the pain is worse or if they bend backward or if they twist um, these are some of the things that a person would describe along with having a back pain also some people may say that the pain improves with rest okay so these are just these are generally some of the descriptions a person would give along um, their back pain now when to, to seek medical care so if you're having back pain that is not improving after a few weeks, this would be a good reason to see a doctor or a therapist. If there are bowel or bladder problems, now back pain with bowel or bladder problems, that is you kind of control your bowels, kind of control your bladder. This is um, something that, that is not to be taken lightly because in the, in what you may have is actually um, nerve involvement or nerve compression that is leading to bowel or bladder dysfunction. So if you're noticing bowel or bladder dysfunction uh, with your back pain, you really should get that checked out. If also there's a fever uh, with back pain, you also want to have that uh, checked out because sometimes the pain may not actually be uh, muscular, it may actually be a um, kidney infection. So a kidney infection can lead to back pain accompanied with a, a fever or even a burning in the urine. If also you fell, if you fell and then you had the back pain, you also need to get that checked out, at least get an x-ray done along with your medical assessment because a fall may actually lead to you having a slip disc which, will, which may lead to a pinch nerve which may then be the cause of your back pain. So trauma associated with back pain is something that is not to be taken lightly and you really, really should get that checked out. Um, just as a side note, uh, once we had a, an 80 year old man who came to our office with back pain and the, his family described that he fell backwards onto a chair and then uh, began to have back pain. So we had him do an x-ray and what happened was that the x-ray showed that he had a fracture of the back, a fracture of the spine. Okay, now he was 80 years old and he would likely also have osteoporosis or reduced bone density. And this would make someone very prone to having a, a fracture of the spine by simply falling back onto a chair. Okay, also again, continuing with when to seek medical care. If the pain is severe and does not get better with rest, if the pain radiates down to both legs, this may, in case, this may actually be a bilateral sciatica. Uh, sciatica generally presents with pain radiating down one side. Now, if you're having pain radiating down both sides, you may actually have a bilateral sciatica. So once again, x-rays or even MRIs may be uh, indicated in this case. If there's a weakness, numbness, and tingling in the legs along with your back pain, again, this is severe. This is ser uh, serious. You really should not be uh, taking this lightly because what you may actually have is very severe nerve compression, which is leading to that weakness in the legs okay and you really should get uh, you really should see a doctor get x-rays get MRIs possibly and you may actually need to engage in therapy as quickly as possible also a weight loss that cannot be explained um, some cancers do spread um, to the back and cancer so, uh, um, late stage cancer can lead to, to weight loss so if you're having back pain with weight loss that cannot be explained then you really should get that checked out by a doctor now when I say weight loss that cannot be explained, if you're having weight loss and you know that you are embarking on an exercise regimen or a diet regimen, then that is weight loss that can be explained. But that is different from weight loss that cannot be explained. If you know you're not on a diet, if you know you have not increased your physical activity and you're having back pain with weight loss or what you may find is that your clothes are slacker or you have to pull your belt a bit tighter, um, this would count as, this would fall under the category of weight loss. Okay, so. 
back pain with weight loss with unexplained weight loss you really should get that checked out also if you have a history of cancer uh, osteoporosis which is reduced bone density uh, steroid use or excess drug and alcohol or nicotine or cigarette use um, along with your back pain if you have this, these things in your history this is if this um, you're using steroid like um, corticosteroids uh, if you know you use a lot of drugs heavily a lot of alcohol or, or smoke heavily and you're having back pain um, then you also should get that uh, checked out as well don't just um, sit on that and hope it's, it's going to get better because it may actually get worse and what may happen is that you may actually end up needing to get surgery if you wait for too long and if you deal with the problem earlier you may actually escape surgery and may actually make good progress with uh, physiotherapy instead okay so what are some causes of uh, back pain uh, well common causes would be a uh, muscle strain or spasm for example if you fell down or if you try to lift a heavy object um, this may lead to muscle strain and spasm uh, also trying to lift something heavily without help may also lead to ligament strain which is also a cause of back pain again falls accidents lifting heavy objects unprepared can also lead to a herniated or a slipped disc okay if a disc is herniated enough or slipped enough it can lead to what is called a pinched nerve okay now in the case here now what we see here in this diagram right here this is a top view you're looking at the, the spine come from the, the top like this and that's what you that's what this view here at the bottom here is these these views right up here this is looking at the spine from a side view so if this is your spine here look at this here and you're looking at it from this way then this is what the view that you're seeing so in the case the series will be a normal spine from the top this here is your this gray area here is the disc and here is the spinal uh, canal where the spinal cord passes and this yellow that you see here those are the nerves that ex exit the um, this spinal canal so this is a normal disc you know in a herniated disc when it just ruptures you can see the yes you have some material exit leaving the disc and entering the spinal canal and this here is a cause for pinching nerves or compression of the, the, the spinal cord or even the nerves that exit okay so that's what this, this is how a herniated this is the mechanism of a herniated disc now there's a condition called spinal stenosis now spinal stenosis is really a fancy way for saying narrowing of the spinal canal and of course we know there are bones but there are also ligaments that help to keep the, um, the spinal bones together and if these ligaments get thickened uh, what they can do they can actually um, uh, intrude into the spinal canal and then you get uh, a narrowing so here's your spinal canal here this, this here's your diameter and when you have ligaments intruding what you have overall is a reduced um, diameter of the spinal canal right? and by this reduced diameter you can actually compress on the nerves that that pass through the, the spinal canal okay and that can also lead to the back pain so other causes are arthritis abnormal spine curves and osteoporosis uh, arthritis uh, with arthritis there's a lot of um, it's a sort of a degenerative picture where there may be loss of this height and what you have is some of the spinal bones collapsing downwards and this collapse downwards can also lead to compression of nerves as well uh, or abnormal spinal curves and osteoporosis once again uh, osteoporosis is really um, reduced bone density and this can lead to um, back pain when it comes to abnormal spine curves you have you got scoliosis and then we have kyphosis and lordosis now scoliosis loosely defined is basically a sideways curvature of the spine okay and if you look at this picture here of, of scoliosis um, instead of having the bones um, stacked upon each other like this what you have is the bones doing something like this okay and due to the curve in the spine and what you're going to have it is one area of this is going to be under more pressure than the other area and that, there, that is at risk for for degeneration due to the additional pressure due to the scoliosis okay and that can lead to back pain now we come to kyphosis and low doses what kyphosis really is is an exaggerated upper back curvature forward curvature of the upper back and low doses is a it's a, a, a curve, excess curvature of the lower back okay so once again in the same principle what you're going to have is abnormal loading of the discs as well as the, the muscles due to the exaggerated curves and this can lead to also lead to back pain if you are assessed and you have these conditions a therapist um, can help you to, to restore normal or close to normal curves and depending on how severe it is depending on your fitness level depending on your age uh, certain risk factors for back pain of course those between age um, 30 or 40 would generally um, that's how you have a high prevalence of back pain lack of exercise or lack of fitness 
if your muscles are not fit and then you decide you're going to lift something heavy or engage in certain activities, you may uh, very well experience back pain because your the muscles and bones and ligaments are just not prepared to take that sort of workload. Uh, additional weight, of course, if you are heavy, then you're asking your back, your back muscles, your whole spinal structure to do more work with the additional weight. Uh, as a side note, if you're trying to lose weight, it would be useful to also do back exercises to strengthen the back. That would make it easier for it to, to bear that, that workload um, that, you, that you are experiencing. Uh, certain medical conditions um, can lead to, to back pain. For example, if uh, a person uh, has cancer and the cancer has spread, for example, in prostate cancer, in prostate cancer, when the cancer spreads to the back, a person can experience back pain as well. A poor lifting technique, of course, um, hunching too much forward in trying to lift a heavy object can lead to back pain. Also, lifting without the appropriate belt or the appropriate assistance can also lead to back pain. Uh, depression and anxiety, there's a, a psychological component here to, uh, to back pain. Okay? This can worsen uh, existing back pain. So let's say a person has, the average person who does not have depression or anxiety has this level of back pain and a person with depression or anxiety has the same level of back pain. But the psychological component makes this person um, experience a worsening. Uh, the, the, the experience is worse for the person who has depression or anxiety. So pain on the whole also has a psychological component as well. Okay? Um, smoking. Uh, a word about smoking. Um, the nicotine in the cigarettes, what nicotine does is causes vasoconstriction. And by vasoconstriction, what I mean is that you have to say this is the diameter of a blood vessel and a person is smoking. What that tends to do, it constricts, it causes constriction of the, the blood vessel. Okay? And what happens is that the, the constriction leads to reduce a reduced blood supply. A reduced blood supply means that the, the, the discs and the, the structures of the back are, are less like, uh, kind of repair themselves as good as if there was an adequate amount of blood supply. Okay, so that is how smoking can worsen back pain. And that is also by this mechanism that smoking can increase your risk of heart attack because the coronary arteries also experience that vasoconstriction due to the nicotine. Okay. Okay, now in prevention, we need to look at things like exercise, uh, proper weight, uh, stop smoking of course, proper posture, an ergonomic workstation, and proper lifting technique. Right, so again, so stopping smoking again reduces the amount of nicotine that is in your system. And uh, this would increase, this would give better blood flow to the back due to the blood vessels having a proper diameter and allowing the, uh, the proper amount of blood, oxygen, and nutrients to actually nourish the back, which will help it to repair. Okay, so when it comes to exercise, exercise, again, is going to strengthen the structures of the back. If your back muscles are stronger, if you have, if you have greater flexibility, if the overall structure of the back is better, then you're less likely to have back pain. Um, proper weight, again, taking up that excess weight on the, on the back, it is going to definitely help with your back pain. Uh, what it will also do, it will help offload. Now, I mean, let's talk about something here. When it comes to having a, a large tummy, what that does, it tends to pull the lower back forward. So you can imagine you having th this gut here with additional weight, and what it does, it pulls the lower back forward. And this gives the lower back uh, additional work to do. So by losing that weight, the lower back is, is now under less strain. Okay, so that is another way in which um, having a proper weight uh, can help with back pain. Um, proper posture. Uh, a lot of people, when they're at the office or, or when they're driving or even just looking at TV, they're slouching. Um, this slouching posture, it is, it is a large contributor to back pain because this, uh, by slouching, what you're actually doing, you're putting a lot of strain on those back muscles and you're stretching them out. And then what you will find over time, you're having this, um, this lower back pain uh, that's uh, very difficult to resolve because a lot of people, they have a habit in which um, they, they're so accustomed to slouching, it's a difficult habit to break. And a lot of the times they come to the clinic and we speak to them and we realize they are slouching a lot. So we say, okay, we're going to treat you for back pain, but at the same time, you have to correct um, that slouching. You have to get rid of that slouching. If you drive for long hours, at least have a, a lumbar support cushion in the car seat, okay, that will take some load of the lower back. In the office, make sure you have an ergonomic chair, a chair with proper um, um, lower back support that will help you. Okay. okay, in terms of diagnosing the back pain, in terms of what is the, the cause of the back pain, um, there's the patient history and then there's the clinical examination. Uh, the patient history would be basically the doctor speaking to the patient and asking the patient to describe 
the nature of the back pain, to describe and say, okay, tell me about this back pain, how long have you had it, um, its severity, tell me what is causing your back pain. So the doctor will then come, couple the patient history with the, the clinical examination. So you look at it, you speak to the patient, and then we examine the patient. So we combine these two, and this will basically sort of hone us in, 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 ter in terms of telling us what is the cause of the back pain and how it is we are actually going to treat the back pain. In terms of investigations, uh, we're looking at the x-ray, MRI, pos um, CT scan, possible blood tests to rule out medical conditions that may be the cause of back pain. Um, bone scan, the bone scan really is to tell if the person has osteoporosis or a reduced bone density. And then there are nerve conduction tests. The, the nerve conduction test generally is done by a neurologist. And if there's any pinched nerve, if you suspect there's a pinched nerve, we do a nerve conduction test, which will then tell us um, uh, to what degree the, um, there is nerve involvement. Okay? So these are the general investigations that are done in investigating the cause of a, a back pain. So here we have an x-ray, which is an investigation that shows scoliosis. So again, remember scoliosis is really a sideways curvature of the spine. And we can see clearly the, um, the spine is curved, um, a lot actually, um, by the, when the x-ray has been done. And here is an MRI. So the MRI here, what the MRI shows us here is that we have some um, herniated disc as well as some disc degeneration here. As well as, so if you look at something here, you see there's a gray um, section here in this disc. But when you come here, you really don't see a gray section. It's really darkened out. And this generally would mean that there is some leakage of fluid from this disc here. So there has been some rupture and some loss of the jelly-like fluid within this disc. Okay, so the MRI really does give a lot of detail. The MRI actually is the, um, the gold standard when it comes to um, the scans, looking at um, when we're trying to look at muscles and nerves. Um, CT scan is really more, um, gives better imaging where the bones are concerned. But if you want to look at muscles and um, nerves, really the MRI is the, the gold standard. Okay, now when it comes to treatment, of course, everyone is different, okay? That's what you gotta remember. And there's no way any clinic can give you a 100% guarantee when they're treating you for back pain. You have to uh, basically let the doctor assess you, let the therapist do treatments with you, and then we, um, we take it from there. We basically try to see how it is you're progressing with each um, subsequent session. But there's no way anyone can examine you and then say, okay, we guarantee you 100% you're going to be rid of this back pain, okay? That doesn't happen. Okay, also in treating um, back pain, medication-wise, we're looking at anti-inflammatories. Uh, you may be uh, familiar with Flammy MX or um, Cataflam, Voltaren, Diclofenac, all of these names, they come to mind. Uh, muscle relaxants like Midocam or Norgesic. Also, Flammy MX has a component, is, is really a, a combination of anti-inflammatory and, and muscle relaxant. There's certain gel, gels and creams like Olfen, Divon, Diclofenac creams. Narcotics, you can do tramadol, antidepressants, and then you have your steroid injections, where a steroid injection can be done to help um, relieve very severe pain. But if you're doing injections, then you really should um, also engage in some sort of therapy. Don't just do the injection alone and, and not attend to the, the actual cause of the, the back problem, the back pain. Okay, also as well, there is therapy and exercise that can be done to help back pain. So we have massage therapy, exercise and stretching, heat therapy. Uh, electrical stimulation, therapeutic ultrasound, and also certain muscle release techniques can be employed by your therapist to help you with back pain. Now, in terms of massage, uh, what massage does, one of, the, one of the key things that massage does is relax tight muscles. A lot of people who have back pain, there may be a component of tight muscles associated with the back pain. So by doing massage therapy, that really can help to release a lot of the tight muscles. And even though a lot of times the massage therapy may just be um, initiating treatment, you can still get a fair amount, a lot of people can still get a fair amount of relief by just simply doing massage therapy. But it is also advisable that you also continue after with um, physiotherapy exercises and stretching. So when it comes to therapy, so once again, you have a, a physiotherapy, which a therapist would take you through certain exercises, stretches and stretches, as well as certain mobility exercises that will help you with your, your back pain. Uh, electrical stimulation. Now, in terms of electrical stimulation, what um, electrical stimulation can do, it can help with pain control, but it can also help to relax certain tight muscles. So, electrical stimulation can be done in conjunction with uh, a massage therapy. Okay, so and which will also help to uh, further release any sort of tight muscles, which can give an additional level of pain relief if a lot if your pain is really due to tight muscles. 
and there are certain release techniques, something called trigger point release. Now, what exactly is a, um, a trigger point? Now, let's say you have a tight muscle. Let's say this, um, this forearm here was tight, okay? This muscle was tight. But there, there's a certain, there, there may be certain spots along the forearm that are especially tight, and these are called trigger points. So a therapist may actually, what do we do, may we do? May put some additional pressure to actually release the, the tight uh, muscles. So that is called trigger point release. There's also something called myofascia release, which is a sort, um, sort of massage, uh, massage therapy technique as well. So uh, many um, techniques are available to your therapist, including things like um, dry needling and cupping as well. Um, in terms of surgery, now surgery, of course, is the last resort, but surgery uh, may be employed if the pain is due to structural issues. Uh, for example, um, you have a very severe, severely herniated disc that has been calcified and therapy is not working. Therapy is not causing the, the, any sort of relief of the back pain. And, this, and then finally, this, this must actually be uh, released, must be, uh, sorry, must be removed um, through surgical means. Also, if there's spinal stenosis, if the spinal canal has been so narrowed, you are compressing the disc a lot, then in that case, um, surgery may very well be needed in the case of severe spinal stenosis. And of course, once again, if there's any sort of severe disc herniation, you uh, need to use surgery to, um, to, to resect the disc that is actually compressing the nerve, which may be leading to your back pain. Okay, so uh, we... So once again, right, so once again, so just to recap on what spinal stenosis is, if you look at this diagram right here, sorry, let's come back to this one. This would be a normal um, spinal canal here of normal diameter and your spinal cord will be passing through right here. Now, in the case of spinal stenosis, again, if your ligaments get very large for whatever reason, uh, you know, have a reduced um, diameter of the spinal canal, this would be called spinal stenosis and severe spinal stenosis, you may actually need surgery to um, to relieve any sort of pressure on the spinal, the spinal cord. Okay. And in, in the case of severe degeneration, if you look up this, at this MRI over here, there's very severe degeneration of the disc here. And this is something that um, therapy may not actually um, help. So in cases like this here, uh, spinal surgery may actually be needed to help with the, uh, the back pain. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that um, short presentation there on back pain. Um, we are located in Chinchin Road, Konopia, um, Progressive Physiotherapy. You can call or WhatsApp us at 747-5297. Uh, if you have any questions, um, let us know. Uh, thanks.